Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning back into my channel. If you don't know me, hi, how are you? My name is Rosa. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. I post new videos every Tuesday, Saturday, and a couple days in between. So the only way you know about the in-between ones is if you subscribe and hit the bell. So I'm gonna get started, go ahead quickly in today's video and what we're gonna be talking about today. So today I'm gonna be teaching you guys, if you can't tell from the title of today's video, is how to become a clinical laboratory scientist or medical laboratory scientist. Both terms are interchangeable. Probably the most confusing thing out of all of this. Terms are exactly the same. You're still a scientist, clinical, medical, same thing. It just changed to medical, I don't know how many years ago, but it did, you guys. And so I have this little printout right here. I got this while I was at work, you know, trying to do some productive things. We have a little bit of downtime. And I wanna share with you guys how you can become a clinical laboratory scientist or a medical laboratory scientist. I'll probably just stick with medical laboratory scientist because that's what this paper says. So we don't get each other confused because we're trying to learn some information right here today. So I'm gonna share how to become eligible to become certified as a medical laboratory scientist through the ASCP, which is the American Society of Clinical Pathologists, and to take the board of certification exam. So the application fee is $240. So once you know you're ready, which I will show you how you will get ready by going with you through all of the routes to be able to become a medical laboratory scientist, then you're eligible to apply for the exam, take it, hopefully pass, and then you are certified. So let's get through it. Okay, route one. You need a bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited college or university. You need a successful completion of a NACLS, that's kind of like the acronym, N-A-A-C-L-S, a medical laboratory scientist program within the last five years. That's the kind of route I took. I took route one, you guys, on how to become a clinical laboratory scientist. So that's route one, pretty straightforward, simple. Get your bachelor's. You also get your NACLS accredited medical laboratory sciences program done and through which usually means that you finish your two years of like the hard sciences. So kind of like an associate's, but if you're taking a bachelor's degree, it's not considered an associate's. You're just basically halfway through your bachelor's. And then the last two years, like what I did, we had a classroom the my third year, my junior year. I'm sorry, I'm not sure where I was at, but I think I know where I was at. I ran out of storage, so I wanted to delete some stuff. Um, I finished my third year junior year you're in the classroom you basically just learn um everything you need to know about being a uh, medical laboratory scientist you take courses in immunology hematology chemistry microbiology um blood bank and those are and immunology oh i think i already said immunology maybe like a little bit of cytology here and there and so basically you just kind of learn all areas of the lab in a classroom setting so you're going through a lot of textbooks lots of slides it's so boring. Uh, it was classroom was the worst for me. I did not like classroom. I would get bored because it's hard for me to focus. So that was tough. But I liked it. I did like being in class. So it was still fun. I still had an enjoyable time. I liked some classes more than others. I really enjoyed chemistry because I had an awesome professor. Blood banking was okay. Heme, I didn't like heme. Never liked heme. I still don't like heme working in the lab. Not my favorite area. But you basically just go through that and then your senior year is when you do your clinical rotation. So for nine months, I was at a clinical site doing my rotations. I was at a major, like really huge level one trauma center hospital doing my rotation. So I saw so many things in the laboratory. I got to work on different areas such as at chemistry, blood bank, urinalysis. I actually worked in um, also in the specialty laboratory. So we do specialty testing and as well as HLA testing for transplant. So that was really cool because I got to see an area that we've never even learned about in school, which I didn't. So I really enjoyed that aspect of it. So basically when you go through route one, that is basically the route you take. So route two of how to become a medical laboratory scientist is that you need a valid MLT ASCP certification. If you don't know what an MLT is, I'm gonna have a video on that as well. I'm talking about what the difference is between an MLT and an MLS. So don't worry guys, we got that video. If you want it, I'm gonna link it up here. So I'll probably make that video before I post this one. And then you need a baraculate, so a bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited college university with 16 semester hours in biology, one semester in microbiology, 16 semester hours in chemistry, including one in organic chemistry or biochemistry. I said biochemistry and organic, cause you're well smart. Not really, not that smart, but I try hard. And then you need to obtain, oh, it has to be 
obtained within or in addition to the baraculate degree, so the bachelor's degree. And then you need two years of full-time acceptable clinical experience in blood banking, chemistry, hematology, microbiology, immunology, and urinalysis, body fluids, and an accredited laboratory within the last four years. So I'm not gonna go, there's like another little section, but I don't think that's like eligible anymore because it said something about 1982 in the other one and we're just gonna skip that. So route two, that's what you need to do. There's no route three and I think that was a part of route three. Love this like other part I'm not including, so don't worry. We're just gonna skip straight to route four. So for route four, you need a bachelor's degree from, yes, yeah, same thing, regionally accredited college or university with 16 semester hours in biology, one semester in micro, 16 hours in chemistry, including one semester in organic or bio, which may be attained within or in addition to the baraculate degree. And you also need five years of full-time acceptable clinical experience in blood banking, chemistry, hematology, microbiology, immunology, and your analysis body fluids from an accredited laboratory within the last 10 years. Route five. We, you need a valid MT slash MLS ASCP certification and a transcript evaluation verifying equivalency to a US baraculate degree from a regionally accredited college university. And you need five years, so five years, of full-time acceptable clinical experience in blood banking, chemistry, hematology, microbiology, immunology, urinalysis, and body fluids in an accredited laboratory within the last 10 years. So if you are an MT slash MLS um, certified through ASCP, you are not required to retake the certification exam. So that's super awesome, but you do need to have your other two bullet points that I went over all done, all completed, make sure everything's checked off and good in order to see for you to be eligible to sit for the ASCP MLS exam. Okay, and it says, there's lots of words on here, it says this transition does not circumvent federal work and state licensure regulations on individuals seeking employment in the U.S. We'll still need to meet all requirements of U.S. immigration visa requirements. Okay, so basically what this means is that you still need to meet all immigration requirements through your visa in order to work through this route if you're coming from a different country. So I guess once you are an empty MLS and you switch over to a full MLS, you basically can't revert back and then you are able to use that MLS certification to meet additional US certification requirements if you need to take additional certifications, if you wanna you know, become a supervisor or anything like that, that's where your title goes from. It doesn't go from your former title, it goes from your new title. And so we are done with that one. And last route, we, it was a lot of stuff, you guys. I know it's a lot of information. So if you guys have any questions, leave questions in the comment section down below. I will gladly answer all the questions you have. And I'm also gonna be linking this in my description for my video description. So don't worry if you guys aren't able to keep up with information because it is a lot. And if you wanna read it, I will post that for you guys because I'm gonna be resource to you guys. So route six. You need successful completion of a 50-week U.S. military medical laboratory training course within the last 10 years. So if you're in the military and you complete this course, you have 10 years to complete it and take the exam. So they give you a really long time, which is very nice. And you also need a bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited college or university with 16 semester hours in biology, one semester in micro, 16 hours in chemistry, which may be attained or in addition to the bachelor's degree. So you can have a bachelor's degree basically in any field, but you have to have those requirements in the sciences. So let's say you're like an art major and you decide, oh dang, I wanna work in the lab. Like why not, that'd be cool because that's a great choice, you guys. You have to have a bachelor's degree in addition to taking these required science courses. So your biology, your chemistry, micro, you also need one full year of full-time acceptable clinical experience in blood banking, chemistry, hematology, microbiology, immunology, and your analysis body fluids in an accredited laboratory within the last 10 years. Go ahead and ask me some questions. I'm gonna leave this for you guys to print out or read from online if you're interested. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please let me know in the comment section down below any questions or concerns, comments you may have. And also give me some video ideas, you guys. What more videos do you want to see from me? I am always happy to hear feedback requests. And if they're reasonable, 
I'm definitely interested in doing them or if it's something that kind of pertains to my channel. I'll definitely consider them. Please leave some down below. I hope this was really helpful, you guys. I want to be an advocate for clinical laboratory scientists, medical laboratory technicians, uh, just to be, you know, that face for the field because there's not a lot of information out there that comes from actual people and most of it's just from the um, certification website, which is not bad at all, of course. You know, I love that I was able to get this from online. But I want to hear from people's experiences. I know a lot of other people do. When I was in the program, I didn't really get to hear many other people's experience because there's not a lot on YouTube. So I figured once I became one, why don't I do it myself? So thank you guys again so much for watching this video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications to stay updated on when I do post new videos. I post every Tuesday and Saturday. And subscribe, hit the like button. And thank you guys again so much. And I hope you have an awesome day. Oh, <laughs>